It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fifth side. It ain't the left side or the right side. Thank you, Solody. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side. Here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. We have a special guest here tonight, Jeff Lloyd from TurnOnTheJets.com. We are previewing the Dolphins. Jets week three matchup. Jeff, uh, taking a look last week at the Jets, they lost 45 to 20. Uh, I I rewatched the game myself. It looked like the game was a lot closer through three quarters until the Raiders finally pulled away. You see, from my vantage point, I think the biggest thing, and and it did seem close, but I I think if you go back to that garbage, you know, uh, penalty they called on Bruce Irvin, which gave the Jets 15 yards. It would have been a second and, second and 11 opportunity if they had not thrown the flag. It gave the Jets some life. Uh, you saw Jack Del Rio kind of got lost, you know, kind of lost his focus, got in with the refs, you know, uh, bang, bang, boom. Next thing you know, Curse caught the big touchdown pass over Amerson. So I think the 45-20, I, you know, Jets fans, they, they want to find some hope, some glimmer, glimmer of something this year. I, I, don't, I don't see it. Uh, I mean, in, in my eyes, that came very easily. Could have been 40 to nothing. Uh, you know, obviously, curse with the other garbage time touchdown late. You know, the, the fumble of the punt. You know, that kid has now been cut. Uh, obviously, they brought him back on the practice squad. This, it's, it's a real tough time right now. And, and look, nobody wants to embrace the fact that your team is tanking and you want to, you know, your team is playing for a number one, a number two overall draft pick which is not going to happen until the end of April. But sometimes that's what you got to do. I mean, if your house burned down, but uh, your guest bathroom on the first floor was still good, you're not going to save it. You've got to tear it all down in hopes of rebuilding it all. And, and that's the problem. And look, you know, and the problem I kind of have is they're playing McCown with, you know, veteran receivers who would maybe be twos, threes, and fours on other teams. In that scenario, shouldn't you be playing, you know, for me, I, I think they should play Bryce Petty. He looks the best right now, the two young guys. Shouldn't he play with the veteran wide receivers? Or if you're going to play the veteran quarterback, play the young wide receivers with him. I, I'm not understanding exactly what they're doing. It's almost like they should be were committed to the tank. And now here at the last second, they were like, oh, well, maybe we at least, you know, want to, you know, try and contend. But meanwhile, you're contending with, you know, veteran players who were, caliber of an expansion roster it's it's just a tough situation for the first two weeks here so jeff just to elaborate on that a little bit i know a lot of times the dolphins jets rivalry is is a really fun one i know for a lot of dolphins fans this year it, it's almost mystifying when they look at the jets roster i know you said embracing the tanking etc but when you look at the moves they made this off season, there really aren't a lot of names left on that team that the Dolphins fans are really going to recognize. I mean, who's left at this point? Because I know so many guys have been jettisoned. It's almost like, oh, God, we forgot this guy. Let's get rid of him, too. I mean, who's left that Dolphins fans are really going to recognize even in this game? Um, you may not see him. Mo Wilkerson, he's, he's not the player that you Dolphins fans are going to remember. He broke the leg. It was a you know, rough period for him there with the broken leg. He got a nice, fat, juicy contra extension. Um, I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt that he it took him a while to come back last year from the injury. Doesn't seem to be playing with the same athleticism and fire that he had, which, you know, for a guy like him, at, you know, a little bit north of six foot five, a little bit north of 300 pounds, moved really, really well for a man of that size. We're not seeing that right now. Uh, the Oakland Raiders offensive line had their way with him and kind of embarrassed him on, on Sunday out in Oakland. So that was not, you know, the best of things. Um, so there's him, uh, obviously two rookie, two new rookie safeties, uh, free agent cornerback here. Uh, you know, I mean, well, you know, uh, Demario Davis is now back from his one year stint in Cleveland. There's not really much to recognize. Uh, you know, Robbie Anderson obviously scored the touchdown in December against the Dolphins up here, which, you know, was pretty meaningless in a game that, you know, the Jets, you know, got steamrolled pretty good by Miami. No, there's not. Uh, you know, there's a lot of young guys. Look, I, I I really like the two young safeties. I think Jamal Adams is a run around, do everything type of guy. 
you know, you go to PFF, he is the top rated defender on this team after two weeks as a rookie, uh, which is, you know, it's great for him. It's not really great for the veterans you got around here. You know, Leonard Williams, you'd hope the grade would be a little bit higher. He really hasn't shown much right now. I think he's in a tough spot right now because any offense right now, they're sitting with their offensive line coach, the offense coordinator, saying, all right, look, we got to find a way to make sure Leonard Williams is not the one blowing up our backfield. So I think he's in a tough spot now where he's not playing with a lot of talent around him like he was accustomed to. But, but no, there's not. And, you know, a lot of this is, you know, this ass draft. And a lot of it is, you know, now with nine picks already for 2018, there's guys here who could still be jettisoned. You know, Jermaine Curse looking good through two games. That's great for Jermaine Curse. And it may be great for the Jets because come the trade, the trade deadline, Jermaine Curse may not be here. So, Jeff, looking at one of the bigger names in the Jets roster, Brian Winters at guard, he's a little bit iffy for this game. What's the latest on him, and how do you see the Jets' offensive line matching up with the Dolphins' defensive line? I don't, you know, the Jets' defense, the offensive line, you know, I kind of like the group they have. You know, I, I like the, the, the interior. Uh, you know, obviously Carpenter is at left guard is the best offensive lineman on this roster. Ryan Winters, who, you know, got re-upped, you know, last year, got himself a pretty nice contract extension, I think is well-deserved at the right guard position. Uh, you know, I think he's kind of, you know, Carpenter as the best player, but I think with, you know, Nick, Nick Mangold being moved on, you know, and obviously still not signed, I think Brian Winters was the guy kind of handed the torch that, you know, he's the captain of this offensive line. You know, him being injured and not being able to go, it's obviously very much going to limit things. You know, I think they like their top five offensive line. I think, you know, uh, Jelan Alon uh, as their rotation, uh, rotational tackle, you know, he was filling at either spot. They like him as their sixth. But after that, it, there's not a lot of depth there. Uh, it's most certainly not going to aid the Jets to, you know, be down an offensive lineman. If they are, obviously, you know, and Dominic and Sue cr- crawling around that middle for Miami. Uh, if I'm Miami, I'm going to put him, even knowing Winters is injured, oh, or if Winters is even there, just put him over there, uh, you know, put him on that side and let him wreak some havoc. Dolphins are six-point favorites in this game, Jeff. So not a, a terribly impossible game for the for the Jets to win here in New York. What do you think the Jets have to do to give them the best chance against the Dolphins and pull out the upset? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I think the biggest problem the Jets are <laughs> going to face here is, uh, look, they haven't really ran the ball well enough to at least sustain – enough time of possession where they're at least able to take things easy on their defense. So that's something you, you, you obviously are going to have to worry about. Um, the drives, you know, there's been a couple of good drives. And McCown, McCown, I, I, I don't really have a pre- issue with Josh McCown. I think he's doing the best he can with what he has. Obviously now at his age, the arm is limited. and is not what it is. You know, he's not a guy who's going to be able to, you know, fire a ball, you know, from the far right side. He's not going to be able to stick it deep out to the left side. He doesn't have that arm strength. You know, he doesn't have an elite, supreme athlete at wide receiver where, you know, that guy is going to beat some cornerbacks, beat some coverage to make things easier on him. So a lot of it is, you know, he's got to work between the hashes because that's the best that he's got. Uh, it, it's going to be tough to make the game close. And, and this Jets defense, you know, like I was talking to you guys earlier, I do not like any possible matchup. You know, Maurice Claiborne is the number one cornerback. He's doing the best he can. There's not a lot of help, you know, obviously in that secondary. But I don't like him matching up with Parker. I don't like him matching up with Stills. I don't like him matching up with Landry. I I don't see any way that there's a matchup where your number one cornerback would be good with any of your top top three wide receivers in Miami. These guys are good players. Uh, You know, Jay Cutler now, it's just going to be another week where he gets to get a little bit more comfortable with these guys. You know, obviously Parker for him, you you got the Jeffrey clone. I don't think he's really ever had the slot guy like Landry. And look, you know, it was a weird stat line, but I think the most important thing was seeing Jay Cutler get involved with a true supreme slot talent like Jarvis Landry last week. It's going to be tough. And I I mean, I'll be honest, that that, that six-point spread, I know it seems weird. You know, it's just, it's, it's too low. It's just too low. Jeff, looking at uh, the the game in general, what's your prediction in terms of score? I mean, what you're hoping for with the Jets is you're kind of hoping what 
what you did last week. I mean, you want to hang into a game as long as you possibly can. And, you know, obviously that score for them, you know, playing Oakland, if you take away Raymond's, you know, muffed punt, you know, right before the half, which made it 21, you know, obviously 21 to 10. And that's what you're looking for. Just hang in it as long as you can. But each week now, obviously, you know, they do have Austin Safarian Jenkins back this week. And I know for a lot of people, it's like, wow, who cares? The Jets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it does seem odd. And they've gotten actually some production from Will Ty, who's kind of looked decent. But now maybe you can go to tight ends. Maybe now you can assist the, the, the uh, obviously, you can assist the, the run game a little bit now. Maybe you can go to tight ends now to assist in the running game. You know, just just some little things. But it's tough right now. And, I mean, this team is not putting out a product that is capable of winning games on Sundays right now. It's it's a tough position to be in as a fan. Me, I, I love the roster building. I love to see a franchise, you know, get where it needs to be. Uh, and for me, look, seven and nine, nine and seven, that's not going to do it for me anyway. You know, I, I want to be in contention for Lombardi. I was not, a, I was not born in '69. I don't know what it was like for the Jets to win back then. You know, with any franchise, what do you want at the end of the day out of every season? You want your team to play for the Super Bowl. And the only way to do that is, you know, there's a lot of pieces that are needed here, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen next season. It's gonna happen over. It's a, it's a process to get there. So you know, you just what, what do I want to see? I want to see the rookies play well. I want to see this. I want to see you know Hanson. I want to see our Darius Stewart. Get these guys on the field. There is no reason these guys should be watching the second version of Jeremy Curley back here with the Jets. No, let these kids go out there. Let them learn. Yes, there's going to be screw ups because they're rookies. That's supposed to happen, but they're certainly not going to learn watching Jeremy Curley play. Yeah, that, that's one thing that never made sense for me with the Jets team in general. I mean. Even if Josh McCown and Matt Forte and Jeremy Curley came and had a year of their career and the Jets end up winning seven or eight games, I mean, just the Jets play way over what they're predicted. I, I just didn't see a way that it would matter because McCown and Forte are going to be 32 and 39, and, and Curley has been here, you know, has been in the league for a number of years. So the last question before we let you go here, Jeff, uh, are you rooting for anybody for the Jets? in the first round of the 2018 NFL draft? Or am, I, am I getting way ahead of myself? Oh, no, trust me, I am. I am all about the quarterback position. Um, I will tell you right now, um, you know, I was on Sam Darnold, you know, as a year ago. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's not changed. Look, some of these it, these guys, they've had their issues. You know, I feel bad for Josh Allen at Wyoming. I think he got put up way too high of a pedestal, you know, as far as, oh, he could be the first overall pick. His tape was great against his, you know, Mountain West Conference opponents. He spit the bit in his championship game through five interceptions against San Diego State. Um, but Sam Darnold, uh, you, you saw it, obviously. You know, uh, if anybody was watching, I was up till 1 a.m. watching quarterbacks last Saturday night. You know, Texas gave USC everything they could possibly handle. You know, there he was down a field goal, 37 seconds to go. You know, gets the ball, gets his team the field goal. You know, uh, had a great pass. You know, he was about to be sacked, jumped in the air, hit his running back out, huge play, got his team in position, got the field goal. First play over time, you know, you know, he's standing about his own 30, drills a skinny post to the back center of the end zone. Probably, you talk talking about a 36, 37-yard throw, absolute money throw. I love the way he carries him. You know, Josh Rosen, uh, Josh Rosen, the only problem I see with Josh Rosen, he's got a little far to him where sometimes it's like, you want to know what? I don't care. I think I can make this throw. And it comes back to bite him in the can a little bit. But look, for me, it's all about the quarterback position. Lamar Jackson, any of these guys, any of these top three, four, five guys right now that you're talking about, about, you know, as far as, you know, NFL quarterbacks for the 2018 draft, they are all better than what is currently in-house for the New York Jets. You know, the Hackenberg pick, you know, blew up in McCagan's face. He's, I don't even think he's going to get the opportunity mm -hmm. to see enough reps to see if it pans out. And, look, it happens. But the other thing is, is I'm not going to go nuts on my GM that he spent number pick 51 in the second round on a quarterback that didn't pan out. He was a second-round right. pick. If, if Christian Hackenberg was taken 3-4 overall, and this is how bad he is from what we've seen from the preseason reps that we've seen of him, yeah, then you're talking about a guy's job. I'm not going to throw the guy out the door because he tried to save some money by drafting a quarterback in the second round, but unfortunately it didn't work. Jeff Lloyd has been nice enough here to join us and come on the other side. 
of the sideline from turnonthejets.com. We'll definitely have Jeff back on a little bit later on in the season and or uh, for the NFL draft. So, Jeff, thanks a lot for joining us. I would say good luck, but, you know, I wouldn't mean that. So we're going to bypass that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, the only thing that's hurting this, because normally, obviously, there's a huge, huge, huge dolphin crowd in, Met, you know, in MetLife. You know, obviously, you know, dolphin fans. There's a lot up this way. They travel well. The only thing that may hurt it and give the Jets fans some saving grace is that it is the home opener. But uh, I still express it. Still expect a pretty good dolphin turnout. Jeff, thanks for joining us here. And you can follow Paul and I on the Fin side on Twitter, Facebook, Spreaker, iTunes. YouTube and on iHeartRadio. And we are going to continue our Jets conversation here throughout the week before we uh, go into the MetLife takeover this Sunday. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the fifth side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the fifth side. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the fifth side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what Brian Cat and Paul about to do.